Hey, what's up? It's Keith. And I went to the psych ward at the start of the year. Did you know that? I like, totally went to the mental hospital and I got my brain fixed. They examined it. They put in some candy and they're like, all right, time to sh time to sew it up shut again. And ever since then, I feel better. You know, like I just genuinely felt more capable and more sane ever since then. So it all started out when I was having delusions at my grandma's house. I had never experienced that before and I don't care to again. I started hearing things. I heard robotic voices, high-pitched voices, low-pitched voices, it's gunshots. I heard things that just weren't there. And it was terrifying, except I knew it wasn't real, so I wasn't, like, scared scared. But I did think that maybe there was a ghost, because, like, how else to explain that? I didn't want to come to the conclusion that I had psychotic features. That's my diagnosis. It's major depression with psychotic features. Because I was sad, and I was hearing things, and that's basically the scientific name for it. And yeah, one day I got too sad. Drew warning, uh, suicidality, and transphobia. And yeah. So basically, I one time I got so sad and so freaked out by my own thoughts that I thought that I was going to come chase after myself and become a terrible person if my brain caught up with myself. I know that doesn't make any sense, but that's the only way I can explain why I climbed out the window at 3 a.m. and broke it. Sorry, Grandma. And I just, like, totally made, booked it. I booked it. I started walking and walking and walking. I didn't know where I was going. It was pitch dark outside. But I just knew I needed to get going away from something. <laughs> I don't even know what. Some kind of demon or... I don't know. But anyway, I went to the emergency room because I saw a big flashing sign that said emergency. And I was like, I have an emergency. I don't know what it is, but I'm literally, like, on the verge of ending it. And that's no good. So I better go there. I paced around outside for a long time, and eventually I built up the courage to come inside. And people there were very nice. I ended up, like, chatting to them about what I was going through. And I was convinced that I was um, gonna, like, say something vile to them. Like, something would just spew out of my mouth, all the most terrible things I could think of. It never happened, but I thought that if I let go of myself for even one second, I would become a terrible person. That's what this delusion kept repeating to me, is that if you... Is that I was not in control of myself, but this other thing was that was gonna burst out my system if I didn't be careful. And that's just terrifying, you know? And I was like, please help me. And they did help me. They hooked me up some like, IVs to make sure I wasn't like totally dehydrated, because that can cause a lot of issues too, I guess. But after that, they asked me some questions, and they realized I was having delusions. I, I knew I was having delusions too, but I didn't know what to do. So they, they asked me some questions, and after a while they're like, hey, do you want to go to the psychiatric unit? And I was like, what question to ask? Um, how are you would be nice. Just kidding, they asked that. But I was like, it can't get any worse. I'm on the verge of ending it. So why don't I just go? And so after some time to think about it, I said, yes. I said, I want to go to the psychiatric unit. And so they left me alone for a couple more hours, and I just sat there hallucinating and thinking that there was a million hillbillies out to get me in the room because it sounded like that. The voices were telling me for <laughs> transphobic things. And I was like, pretending I was a superhero because that's the only way I could cope. I was just sat there, and I heard a million voices of like some redneck conservatives just telling me all the most transphobic shit that I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> It doesn't make any sense, but that's mental health. It doesn't make any sense. So I decided I was going to reinvent myself and become stronger than that. I was going to become the ultimate transgender. <laughs> I don't even know. I became the ultimate transgender that night to save myself. I'm going to laugh at it because it's funny. All my delusions were funny, thinking back about it. Like, most of them, anyway, were just, like, hilarious. <laughs> it, like, if it were actually happening. Anyway, that night I got carried out on a stretcher, how dramatic, to the psychiatric unit. And that's when I started my journey. I got there, and I don't remember the point for me getting there to having a room to check me in and all that. I think I just got my room immediately, but I was probably also like on drugs and also hallucinating. So like, I don't even know what happened, honestly. But from then on, I just started deciding I was going to make friends with everybody. Because that's what I do when I don't know what to do. I just make friends with people. I just like see a stranger, and I'm like, you, you will become my new friend. Just kidding. But like, it's just something that keeps me sane. And so I became friends with everybody there. So I decided I was going to keep befriending people, and I just did, I picked a new person every day pretty much, and I just befriended them. Meanwhile, they were trying out different meds on me to stop me from ending it, and to stop me from hearing voices, and to stop me from being so anxious all the time. I have a lot of issues, if you can't tell, I have a lot of issues. But yeah, I made it out of there with my head intact, and screwed more tightly on my shoulders. My marbles have been returned, but that's not where the story ends. I yeah, made friends with many alcoholic parents who were trying to get better for their kids. There was a lot of them, and I felt a lot of empathy towards them. I felt that they were doing the best that they could in a situation where they were suffering, and that's all that we were doing is trying the best that we could do while we had a bunch of mental issues going on. And some people were reserved, some people didn't talk to anybody else. I tried to get to be friends with them, but it's hard, so I kind of left them to do their own thing. And some people I felt, some people I felt really, like, easily. And some people I got along with super easily, and we just became friends right away. And that was mainly me with the other trans people, honestly. Like, there was other trans people there around my age, and as soon as we found out that we were trans, we were like, hey, buddies for life, am I right? I still have their phone numbers and stuff, I haven't talked to them in a long time, but I have, like, their Instas and stuff, and it's great. But, like, we formed a group there that was really tight-knit. We drew each other pictures of, our, of the other person, and we chatted about trans things, and we talked about how the staff weren't treating us right, according to our trans identity. The staff, some of them were very supportive, like, I remember one... Um, I asked to have a trans roommate because I was lonely in there. I was lonely in my room. I was the only one with that roommate, I think. And it was nice to have my own space for a while while I was figuring things out. But eventually I wanted a roommate who was trans. And I just got just that. The same day I asked, the same night, there was somebody... It, it, I had a roommate. And I was really grateful for that, that they matched me up with another trans person. But funny story, I, as they came in, I thought they were another voice in my head. I didn't think that they were a real person. And so I was like, excuse me, 
I don't want to see you right now. And then I realized there was a real person as a man. I was like, oh my god, I'm so sorry. I thought I hallucinated you. And it turns out they weren't hallucination, but they were a friend, they're a new friend for me. And yeah. <clears throat> but there were some instances where I didn't feel listened to as a trans person. I felt looked down on. Like they were using my chosen name, as they should, Jeffrey. Um, but they made it seem like it was a really big task to say my preferred name and to introduce people to me, like new staff members. But I feel like that could be easily fixed with just like a, I don't know, put my name in the system as my preferred name. Or if they can't do that, because I know they can't really do that, but like maybe in parentheses or something. Just have something. Like the college I go to does that. They have a preferred name option that goes to everything in the server so that you just don't even have to say anything. It's just there. Anyway, they made me feel like I was a burden. They made me feel like I was a burden. When that's kind of why I went there. It's because I felt like I was a big burden on life, you know, on people in my life. And I wanted to not be alive. And they were making me feel like I was just another inconvenience for them having to call me Jeffrey and stuff instead of my legal name. But that was only a couple staff members. One of them I trusted because he was my med guy. He gave me my meds and I was like, you give me drugs, how can you be bad? Just kidding. But like, one time like my friend had their legal name on the board that everybody could see, but my name was my chosen name up there. So I was like, hey, you know what you did with my name up there where you changed it to my chosen name? You should do that for my friend too because, you know, like it's just like not cool seeing your dead name up there. You know, other people might see that. And this guy was like, um, you gotta go to the core and like you gotta go through the legal systems first before we change it up there. And it's like, just fucking get a whiteboard eraser and get a sharpie or not sharpie but an actual marker and just change it it's that easy to make a trans person life trans person's life better but he was so stubborn <sighs> makes me feel sad because like trans people are very vulnerable and we face high suicide rates and that should be a well-known fact to people in mental health services so i don't get why they're making trans people's lives harder and that's my complaint about that place other than that it was a blast honestly <laughs> except for that part and also the part where i was waiting and not sure when i was gonna get out that was scary but other than that had good food really good food three meals a day sometimes i was too sad to get up and like get the food and stuff but I, most days I went up and had a good old meal. Go meal, we had like mashed potatoes and chicken, like cereal if you wanted, like lactose free options for me. Because if I had milk, I'll shit my pants. But they had lactose free options for me. But I didn't get the ice cream. And that's why I'm crazy. Just kidding, that's not the reason why. But we had gym time, like certain days we could go to the gym if we wanted to. And that was really fun. That was one of my favorite parts, working out with people. Um, we had art days where a person come in, we do art therapy, we would do glitter and make beads together, make what well, we make bead bracelets together. I was like, uh, beads, set, breed? Oh my god. Um, we had group therapy days where we would have a group, we would have a therapist come in and um, teach us new coping methods, healthy coping methods, and stuff like deep breathing, which I know people might roll their eyes at, but it really helped for me. Deep breathing, meditation. I'd already been meditating before, but that really showed me that it was a good thing. And positive affirmations and teaching about depression and BPD and learning about other people's mental illnesses, which was really great because it made me feel less alone. Because I was literally thinking that I was being chased by a demon ghost who was out to get me or like make me a terrible person or make me into a monster, basically. So I was afraid of I was scared that I was turning into a monster. And I was hearing voices. It was just a whole package of craziness. And I'm going to call it crazy because I just, that's what I call it. You don't have to call your experiences and symptoms like words like that. But also, if you're not crazy, don't use the word. Well, that's a debate for another day. But yeah, I had an overall good time except for those transphobic experiences and like the overall anxiety of being in a place that I wasn't sure about. But it felt like a little vacation. I had my own room, I felt like I had my own dorm. I'm in college now and it's not that different. I mean, there's people um, around to talk to that are around my age who are trans that I can talk to. And it was the same experience at the mental health hospital. And honestly, that's just what I needed is other trans people to talk to. That's the moral of the story. If you're trans, just make friends with other trans people and it fixes everything. Well, it fixes a lot, honestly. It makes everything easier. But yeah, all my meds got sorted out and I take like so many now. I take like seven meds a day or more. But it works. They figured out what works for me. And now I don't hear voices. And I'm like, I haven't had a mental breakdown in like at least five months. Just saying a lot. Because I used to break down crying every day and just like huddle up in the corner and be sad and like depressing morning. But I'm going to talk about that. So like, I used to just like go in the corner and have a panic attack and just, or a depressive episode and just like nearly kill myself like every day. That was not healthy. But I haven't felt, I haven't had a suicidal thought in months. Ever since I left there, I haven't been feeling suicidal. Like I had a little uh, down period. But the longer it gets, the better I feel on my medication. It works. And I'm an advocate for medication. I don't think that all medication is um, moral, like pharmaceutical companies and pushing things and stuff like that. But I do think it can really fucking help. Like, it, sometimes it is the solution. Sometimes you gotta just take your meds. <clears throat> and that's the moral of the story. Uh, if you're feeling sad and you don't know what to do, just break out of your grandma's house in the middle of the night uh, and go to the emergency room and just go to the leave in. Because sometimes the leave in is good. Thanks for watching. I've been Keith or Jeffrey. I like both the names. And you can like subscribe to me if you want, or like press the like button, leave comments. If you have any questions, let me know. If you have similar experience, let me know. If you've been also to the psych ward, let me know. I'd love to hear about it. And if you're trans and you've been to the psych ward, let's be friends. <laughs> um, yeah, thanks for watching. Goodbye.